Hi, I'm Elaine Vickers. Welcome to my video series on cancer treatments. In this series, I'll explain how different types of cancer treatment work. We'll start with an overview of the main treatment types, which I'll divide into two groups, local treatments and systemic treatments. Local treatments only directly affect the tumour and the local surrounding area. The two most important examples are surgery and radiotherapy. Now you might think surgery has been around forever, but it only became truly effective from the mid 1800s onwards. Once anaesthesia became possible and we understood the importance of preventing infections. Radiotherapy had a much quicker start. X-rays were discovered in 1895 and within just a few years, doctors were using radiation to shrink tumours. It works by directing high energy beams at tumours, damaging cancer cell DNA. Thanks to modern radiotherapy machines and techniques, this is now done with incredible precision. Systemic treatments circulate throughout the whole body. The earliest examples are chemotherapy and hormone therapy. Chemotherapy began in the 1940s and 50s when researchers discovered that certain toxic chemicals could kill cancer cells. These treatments were first of all given to patients with blood cancers like leukemias and lymphomas, but then gradually introduced as a way of shrinking tumours and reducing the risk of cancer returning following surgery. Hormone therapy actually came earlier. In the 1890s, a Scottish doctor named George Beetson found that removing the ovaries could shrink breast cancer, realising that hormones like oestrogen were fueling its growth. Hormone therapy for prostate cancer followed in the 1940s. Then came targeted therapies and immunotherapies, and these are the treatments I spend much of my working life trying to describe. Targeted therapies emerged in the late 1990s with drugs like imatinib for chronic myeloid leukemia and trastuzumab, also called Herceptin, for breast cancer. These are often drugs that have been deliberately designed to block a specific protein that cancer cells are relying on to survive and to multiply. Immunotherapy has a much longer but bumpier history than targeted therapy. In the 1890s, an American doctor called William Coley experimented with bacterial mixtures to stimulate the immune system in patients with sarcomas. Then in the 1970s, the BCG vaccine, a vaccine to protect against tuberculosis, was repurposed to treat bladder cancer. But the real breakthroughs came in the 1990s and the 2000s, with an antibody-based drug like rituximab and the first immune checkpoint inhibitor, ipilimumab, approved in 2011. I'll end with a recap. Firstly, most cancer treatments have a relatively recent history. Even surgery only really got going in the 1850s. And we can split treatments into two groups. Those that are local, affecting only a tumour and its immediate surroundings, or systemic drug treatments that reach the whole body. Some systemic treatments like chemotherapy, hormone therapy and targeted therapies directly kill cancer cells. In contrast, immunotherapies kill cancer cells by using the patient's immune system. Don't forget, if you enjoy my teaching style and want some education for your team, find me on LinkedIn or contact me through my website. There are links in the description below.